Hello my friends. I know it's been quite some time since our last video chat. I wanted to give you an update on my recent trip to the Dominican Republic and on the latest on what's going on with my case. Before I get into all that, I wanted to give you a recap on what happened to me in the Dominican Republic on April of 2017 with Dr. Tanya Medina de Garcia. I can tell you that her pre-op pep talk was of, hey Barbie, don't worry, you're gonna have, you're gonna have a beautiful waist and when you wake up, everything is gonna be all well. Well, that wasn't the case. When I woke up from that surgery, I can tell you that I felt a burning sensation in my body a burning sensation within myself that I couldn't contain. I felt crucial, crucial pain in my abdomen and in my back. I couldn't move. I can tell you also that my daughter noticed something wasn't right. She tried to communicate with Dr. Tanya Medina de Garcia and she wouldn't show up. A couple, like a day later, when I got up, when I actually woke up actually in the morning, I woke up again in excruciating pain. And Dr. Tanya Medina's uh, massage lady walks in. I'll never forget her because of how she treated me. Uh, she goes up to me and she <sighs> taps me on my leg and tells me, okay, okay, it's time to get up. You have to get your massages. And I told her, I said, I can't do this. I'm in so much pain. And when she rips off my, my blankets, I am drenched in blood. I mean... It, 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 it was all blood and my, my sheets were all, all blood. And she was, she acted like she was annoyed that she had to clean me up. So what she did was she grabbed me. She grabbed me and lifted me up by my faha and said, oh, come on, you have to get cleaned up. This, this is how we do it. You know, don't worry about it. You're going to get through it. And she took the baby wipes, unzipped my faha, took the baby wipes, and just brutally, brutally wiped me down. And I, all I could just do was, I, I was weak. I wasn't even feeling well. All I could do is scream and tell her how much pain I was in. And my daughter would tell her, my mom is hurting, my mom is hurting, but she would tell her, the nurse would tell her, listen, this is how we do it here. She, she has to, you know, be brave and she has to toughen it up and just, she'll get through this. Once she cleaned me up and placed me back in bed like I was a piece of me, I stayed in the hospital for another day. But in the interim, my daughter was noticing that I was not well. I didn't look well, I was pale. I was, I couldn't, I was in so much pain, I couldn't even talk. My daughter demanded that I see Dr. Medina Garcia. And so when I finally got to see Dr. Medina de Garcia, she was, she reacted like she was annoyed. I was even in her presence. She told my daughter, well, she needs blood transfusions and they're gonna be at such cost. They're gonna be $200 each transfusion and whatnot. And then she's gonna need hyperbaric uh, treatments after this. And then we were in a foreign country um, with no family there. I'm Hispanic, I'm Puerto Rican, but you know, 
I was born here in the States. My second language is Spanish. So I was trying to understand, in spite of me feeling delirious because I was, I was trying to tell my daughter what she was saying. It makes a decision whether your mother lives or dies. So of course, my daughter chose, I had no, I had no choice but to choose for me to live and get these blood transfusions. And that was another night in another clinic and getting the blood transfusion. I was feeling so weak. My friends, I was feeling so weak, so much pain. I was scared. I can tell you that I was thinking about everything under the sun children, my husband, my mother, everyone. And I knew that I had to, I had to fight. I had to fight for my life. I had to get better at listening to myself, not knowing that the real challenge was ahead of me. After that night of the, blood, of the staying at the clinic for the blood transfusion, Let me back up a little bit because there's one thing that I have to tell you. The night that I had the blood transfusion, I had an, a so-called employee take care of me. And that employee was Dr. Tommy Medina de Garcia's husband. He didn't introduce me himself to me as her husband. He just told me he was doing the night shift and I remember him putting a bedpan under me so that I can urinate and keep getting the blood transfusion. Uh, it was, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable because I'm not too comfortable with, you know, having other men see me or take care of me other than my husband, of course. But got through the night, woke up in the morning, and we were transferred right back to the recovery house. So I got up in the morning and they took us back to the recovery house. Um, side note, that on the way back to the recovery house, <sighs> Dr. Tanya Medina's the RCS drivers used regular cars. There was no ambulance, no nothing. So can you imagine me in so much excruciating pain and hitting every single bump there was until we got to the recovery house. Getting there deliriously, I get into the house. My daughter helped me, tried to help me get up into the house, up, to, up the stairs and come to see that I was my room was like three flight up the stairs and no, with no help. They told me, you have to, you have to do this on your own. You have to climb the stairs up by yourself because this is, what is what's going to get you better. You need the exercise all on your own. So let's go do it all on your own. I couldn't believe it because I'm saying to myself, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I don't know what's going to happen to me here, but I was scared. I'm still scared. So I'm saying to myself, let's just keep it to yourself and just try and do it until I, I did. I, I finally winded up climbing up the stairs, went into my room and then maybe a couple hours later, another nurse comes in and tells me, you have to go get hyperbaric oxygen um, chamber therapies today. You have to start today and that's gonna be for a couple days. Need, need, needless to say, but here we go again. I had to get up from my bed. At this point, I barely ate, slept or drank anything and no medication to say the least, no medication yet. Once we get to the hyperbaric, uh, therapy 
uh, office, we get there and I see the contraption that I have to get into the chamber. I, I said to myself, I prayed, I started praying right there and then. I was so scared and to know, I, I said to myself, oh my God, God, give me strength. Give me strength, God, because I don't know if I'm gonna live through this. So, uh, the assistant there uh, places me in the chamber and I'm getting the therapy. Therapy is like maybe an hour long, maybe an hour or an hour and a half by the time that they prep you and start the therapy. I finish the therapy there and I go back to the recovery house. This was a couple days until I am released. It's the day where Tanya Medina de Garcia releases me to go back home. When I go to her office with my daughter, I'm still not feeling well. And I notice that there's so much bruising in my, in my stomach. And I just wanna also mention that on the last day of my therapy, oxygen therapy, the owner met me there. It was bright and early to get my therapy and he was the one that, that was there to receive me. He was so annoyed. He was so annoyed because he saw that I was in so much pain and I was so much discomfort in this Faja still. And he asked me, he says, why did they not take this off you? This is terrible. This is, I cannot believe that these nurses are doing this to you. Why did they not take this off at least for a while and let, and let this breathe, let your stomach breathe. Let the area, necrotic area, because it was already becoming necrotic. It was already changing colors. Why didn't they let it breathe? I, my, my answer was, I don't know. I don't know. So um, he was there to administer the last um, oxygen therapy. Um, so back again to, I'm sorry, it's just so much information and I'm trying to condense it so that it's not so long, but I wanted to give you details. These small details are what's gonna help you understand my sorrow, my pain, my trauma. So on my last day that I'm there, um, there's a lot of women all over the place and it's my turn to see Medina. So I go into her office with my daughter and she gives me the release letter to go to come back to the States. All the while she's just, she has a room full outside, waiting room full of people. So she's dying to just get me out. She signs me out and gives me the letter. And so I, I'm back in the States. I'm still not feeling well. A uh, couple of weeks I, in the interim, let me just wind back a little bit. While I'm back in the States, I'm texting her and I'm telling her that I do not feel well. I'm texting her at, in, at WhatsApp, sending her pictures, and she's telling me, no, Barbie, you're doing, you, it looks fine. It's a process. This is all a process that you're going through and you're going to be fine. Well, it wasn't so fine until one day my husband comes in through the door and I'm sitting, well, hunched over not in a chair. And he looks at me and he says, oh my God, let's go, let's go. He was, he was in a panic mode and he tells everyone, let's go. Let's just get her stuff and let's go to the emergency room. So we get to the emergency room and the nurse there tells, informs my husband that if he had waited another day, that I would have died. The, everything from there, from that moment on, went really fast. They started IVs, almost the whole room was full of IVs. Uh, pain medications, uh, so many other things. Uh, they were drawing blood. 
so much so that they had to admit me. And when they admitted me, I saw infectious disease doctor. I saw a plastic surgeon. I saw, well, it was oh, a whole host of doctors. Where to the point that uh, I was evaluated and they told me that they had no choice but to debrief my abdomen, my, where the wound was. Um, I can tell you that the decision was was hard, but I, but we had to just, you know, we had to make that decision and just go with it because it was necrotic already. It was it was yellow. It was all different types of colors. It was it was dead. My 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 the skin tissues were dead already. So they debriefed the area. And when I woke up from the procedure, I can tell you, I can tell you that it was, it was a hole the size of a softball. I was beside myself. My husband, my family, we just, we, we didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. And I tried to just stay positive for them. I was discharged maybe a week after that. And I had to go to another hospital and start wound therapy. That was another painful procedure that I had to endure. My friends, I just want to make clear to you that everything that I'm telling you is my truth. It's my truth. It's it's my trauma that I live with day in and day out. It replays in my head day in and day out. And I know for a fact that it replays in my daughter's mind and my family's mind. This is not easy what we're going through. It really isn't. So once, sorry, so once wound therapy uh, okayed me for me to see another plastic surgeon to reconstruct uh, the wound to try and see if they can piece back the area, it took a couple months in October is when October of 2017 is when um, I was seen by the plastic surgeon and he also treated me and he told me I still wasn't ready. I still wasn't ready for the procedure and then I had to wait for a couple months. Uh, this doctor, this doctor, that, this plastic surgeon that told me, I can tell you that he was very sympathetic to how I was feeling and to everything that I en endured. And he told me that he would be with me every step of the way. And he was, he was. So surgery time came to reconstruct the area of the wound. Um, suffice to say that he did the best that he could with, you know, with what he had to work with. Um, and I can tell you that the results are still not what I say are picture perfect. I still look like the Bride of Frankenstein. I still need another reconstructive surgery. Now I want to briefly uh, update you on my recent trip to the Dominican Republic. I can tell you that in going there, just just by thinking about going there, I revisited everything all over again. The district attorney uh, wanted me to schedule a couple medical evaluations that I needed to get. So that's why I had to go back to the Dominican Republic. So once I am there, we 
hit the ground running. I can tell you that things were very hectic. Um, first things first, we saw the district attorney and um, there were things that needed to be done and uh, doctors that needed to be seen. I can tell you that when we went to the first doctor for my evaluation, that doctor was not available. We, needless to say, we had to go to another doctor, another doctor that was not available. Then travel to the other side of the island turns out that there was a conflict of interest and couldn't see that, that doctor. Um, went to see a psychologist. I can tell you that uh, that session oh, was very heartbreaking. I had to revisit my trauma my nightmare and it was it was a long session I can tell you that from from there the next very day um, the district attorney wanted um, the attorneys to meet I can tell you from that meeting that meeting was just that meeting was not what I expected. Um, I can tell you that nothing was resolved. I can tell you that it's just, it, it, it's quite amazing on how this doctor retained a, a, a lawyer out here in the States to prevent me, to stop me from posting my truth on all types of social media platforms and try to sue me for hundreds of thousands of dollars if I don't if I don't stop posting. Meanwhile, I have also retained legal counsel here in the States and they have advised me to keep telling my truth, to keep advising people and letting people know what happened. And my friends, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to let you know what happened. I'm gonna keep posting on social media, keep trying to post on all types of social media platforms. I'm gonna keep doing interviews in English and in Spanish. And I want you all my friends to stay with me, stay with me in this journey. And let's see this whole thing through. Thank you, thank you all very much and God bless.